So I've had quite a few messages saying we still don't really understand what the effect is of the mast rake on the catamaran. I thought I'd make a short video just to go a little bit more into detail about the effect of the mast rake on the catamaran. Hello, yes, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV. And yes, that is a Hobie 16. And yes, we're gonna be taking a look at mast rake. In principle, all of this is exactly the same for any type of catamaran. Uh, so I think we should just dive in and have a look. So what we have is um, the two key points are on the sails, the whole sail plan, we've got what is called the center of effort. And what that center of effort is, is the deepest part of the whole sail plan. So that is the combination of the jib and the mainsail. And um, so we have the deepest part and that is where the majority of the power and the drive is coming from. So on the Hobie 16, that is approximately a third of the way back from the mast on the mainsail. So that is where the kind of center of the power is coming from. And then what we also have is the center of lateral resistance, which on a boat with dagger boards is very easy to pinpoint because the center of lateral resistance is the dagger board. But on a Hobie 16 or a boat with skeg hulls, um, it's a lot more ambiguous where that center of lateral resistance is. So we could say it's probably somewhere around here because as well as the hull giving us that resistance, it's also the rudders which are doing that job as well. So it's a combination of the hull and the rudders giving us that lateral resistance. Then what the mast rake is doing is it's altering the relationship between the center of effort and the center of lateral resistance. So at the moment, we've actually got the mast raked as, for, as far forwards as it can possibly go, which is putting the center of effort further forwards than the center of lateral resistance. What that is going to do is going to make the boat want to turn downwind. Because if you imagine the pressure being further forwards of the pivot point, so that pressure is going to be pushing here and that is going to be wanting to turn the boat downwind. So that's gonna give us that feeling in the rudders, which is called Lee Helm, which is a very disconcerting feeling where you're having to push the rudders away from you all the time just to keep the boat going straight. So we wouldn't generally go for having the mast so far forwards. This at the moment is actually set with the shrouds on the top of the adjusters, just for the example. Also, by having the mast further forwards like this, what it's going to mean is that the boom is much higher, meaning that you're not gonna be able to get the main sheet in as far. So if one day you're feeling that the main sheet is the right length, and another day you're thinking, hold on, the main sheet feels really short today. It might be because you've brought the mast further forwards, which means this distance is greater, meaning your main sheet will feel a bit shorter. Okay, so we're not into having the mast this far forwards. The one, well, the two possible benefits of having the mast this far forwards, although it's not something we're going to do, is one, it does make the boom higher, making it easier to get under the boom. And the second thing is, 
it's going to make the boat possibly a bit more efficient on the downwind because we're putting the mast more upright. That's going to present more sail area to the wind and perhaps there will be some positive effects there. So let's bring the mast back a bit and see how that's going to work. And I've just gone round to the other side. I'm just going to loosen the jib halyard off for touch. Okay, jib halyard is loose. And now what we can do is bring the main sheet in tight on the side which we want to move the shroud because now that shroud is totally loose. Okay, that one is done. Of course, I'm gonna to have to do the one on the other side. And we're going for, this time, one, two, three, four, five, six from the bottom. Okay, so now we've moved the mast back a bit. Um, we can see the boat is looking a bit more normal. Um, you do see a lot of the older 16s have got the mast really too far forwards or uh, towards upright. And a good way of um, telling how much the mast is too far upright is just to have a look at the gap between the boom and the back beam. And by just looking at that, we can get a fairly good idea of where we should be putting the, the mast. But do check out the previous video on rig tuning the Hobie 16 where there's all the measurements for the mast rake. But here we can see the center of effort in the rig is now a bit more getting towards being in line with the center of lateral resistance. So with the mast in this position, this could possibly be good for the heavier teams in the lighter conditions where you're really looking to get as much power out of the boat as possible. Again, we're not really able, hold on, I'll go around the back. Yeah, we're still not able to get the main sheet block to block, but we certainly are moving in that direction. So we've moved the center of effort further back by moving the shrouds down. So we're moving the shrouds to alter the mast rake and then the jib halyard is just being fixed for the rig tension. Okay, so let's move it down a bit more. Three from the bottom. Okay, so now we can see that the 16 is looking a bit more like normal. Uh, three from the bottom on a fairly recent European Hobie 16 is pretty much the industry standard, either three or four from the bottom. Uh, this is good for sort of medium weight teams in most conditions. Uh, what we've done here is we've brought the center of effort further back. So now the center of effort, very roughly speaking, is a little bit further back just a little bit than the center of lateral resistance, which means the push. If we imagine that the center of lateral resistance is here, the push is now behind there from our center of effort, which means it's pushing there, which is gonna turn the boat into the wind, uh, which is gonna give you just that slight pull on the rudders, which is that windward or weather helm which is what you really want so if you put the rudders down and you're sailing upwind the boat will very slowly turn into the wind that's what we're looking for of course this does depend on having your rudders set up nicely as well but there we are and then when we're sheeting in with the mast in this position.
as you can see there, we are able to get it block to block, which is our classic high wind setting for the main sheet. Um, the mast is further back when we're sheeting in more because we're kind of stretching the rig to the back of the boat. That's bringing our centre of effort slightly further back, which is really going to help the boat to charge upwind. And then we're going to find that our main sheet is the right length. Okay, so there we are. We've now got the rig as far back as it will go. That's going to be uh, a good setting for the really, really lightweight teams. So if your combined weight is possibly 110 kilos or less, then having the rig as far back as it will go is going to be a good spot for you. One thing that this is going to do, to do however, is it is going to make it more difficult to get away from the wind if you have stalled or failed attack. Because the center of effort is now quite a long way behind the center of lateral resistance, which means the rig is really pushing the boat into the wind. So going into the attack is going to be easy, but you are going to have to use a bit more technique like what we did in the rudderless video uh, to get away from the wind, which might be sitting on the leeward side for a little while just to get the boat to turn away from the wind there. But generally the bottom hole is a little bit extreme and for the lighter teams, the second hole from the bottom would be more appropriate. Then if we sheet the main in, Again, we've got our rig tension absolutely maximum here. So we've still got the option to loosen the rig as well. So that goes block to block fairly easily, which again is stretching the rig towards the back of the boat, putting the center of effort further back and the boat is really gonna go up, upwind very effectively. Okay, one thing when we're moving the rig this far back is with the jib, it is bringing the jib further down as well, which means you might need to use um, a different technique with the shackle on the clue of the jib there to be able to get enough tension in the jib. But then if you are experimenting with moving your rig back, if you do get to a point where it's feeling like the rudders are getting very heavy where they weren't heavy before, then chances are that you've moved your rig too far back and you should perhaps put it back up one hole on the adjusters on the shrouds. So there we go. I hope that has been in some way either helpful, interesting, or it just passed the time perhaps. But um, yeah, there's a little bit more on mast rake. Again, do check out the previous rig, to, rig tuning video and their rig tuning videos specific to the, uh, the F-18 style catamaran as well. Um, and you can get some more information from there. Don't forget to give the video a like if you liked it. Do subscribe to Joyrider TV. If you're not yet subscribed to Joyrider TV, and there'll be more great stuff about catamaran sailing coming up every day. Thank you very much.